So the orange box is uh, going to be available on the PS3, the 360, and the PC this fall. It'll contain five games in one box, available for about 60 bucks. The three new games in the box are Portal, Team Fortress 2, and Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Also included to make sure everybody's complete with the Half-Life track of games so far in the Half-Life 2 series is the original Half-Life 2, the full game, and Episode 1. You've seen a lot of migration from the idea of the big epic blockbuster from Valve over the years, starting with Counter-Strike in 2000, I guess it was. Portal is similar to that in that it's a team that came to us instead of from the mod community, this time they came to us from the DigiPen Institute, uh, which is a school up in Washington for game design. I think in a lot of ways that the folks in schools or in the mod community have the freedom to be more creative because they're not bound by sort of, you know, the typical commercial process of, you know, what's the budget for this project and when are we going to ship it by and how many platforms and all this stuff. I mean, they're kids, they get to say, what do we want to make? But for us, yeah, I mean, it is a step, a small step outside of our comfort zone of FPS sort of action game genres. Uh, it's still FPS, but it's obviously out of the action space now, moving more into sort of exploration and puzzle and layering uh, some different genres and sort of opening up new gameplay in a way that's similar to what the Gravity Gun did. Uh, in Half-Life 2, but with Portal and sort of our episodic approach now, we're able to sort of carve out just a specific bit of gameplay that's targeted to be about four to six hours of gameplay that's really just about Portal and allows us to dive into that gameplay uh, without having to sort of, again, go back to that big blockbuster mentality and create 40 hours and narrative and all these other pieces just to ship a new idea. Are you guys working on your next engine? Are you sort of working on your new set of technologies? Source sort of, again, sort of breaking the rules at Valve. Source is sort of divorced from the idea of version that one, two, three, four. What we try to do is build an organic or a modular set of technology systems that can constantly be evolving. So, you know, I don't know what version number we are on Source now, but with each release, whether it was Half-Life 2, Lost Coast, Day of Defeat, Source, Episode 1, the engine was revved with, you know, things like HDR technology for better lighting. Um, uh, there was more AI introduced in Episode 1 to drive Alex as the, you know, this great buddy character, um, and so on. And so in Episode 2, you're seeing things like cinematic physics added, and uh, there's a new particle system that will allow for new effects and whatnot. We're just going to keep adding to that pool of technologies as we see fit for our games and as other people using our technology are sort of calling for features. I think there's a lot of gameplay left in, the, in both the Gravity Gun and the Portal Gun is just starting, we're just starting to find out what's possible with that. Um, you know, the technologies that we're working on now are really more stemming from multi-core. Um, one of the hottest things that's going on in hardware right now is uh, what the CPUs are doing and what they're allowing, especially once we get to quad core and beyond. Um, for a long time we've been racing to make our games look pretty and to have great special effects and that's great. But as we've made our games really, really pretty, they've gotten no smarter. You know, so what we're going to be able to do in the future and some of the things that we're working on for future versions of Source and our other games are being able to do tons of things on screen at the same time, um, being able to do lots more complicated AI routines, more AI routines, so smarter characters, more characters, um, more situational kind of, uh, you know, puzzles and complex based on players' actions being more reactive. We're in the middle of the trilogy, right? So episode two is really going to be a big turning point as, you know, we move into sort of the thrust of what's going on. So uh, for us right now, it's really about sort of marrying, you know, uh, the trilogy together and setting the stage so that we hit that right balance of firing things up, but also keeping uh, on track to, so that the bridges meet for episode three. Um, and it's really been exciting for us to do uh, the development this way and to sort of not spend six years making Half-Life whatever was next and to do it this way. Um, having said that, you know, we're, we're learning. You know, episode one basically came by itself and with Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, episode two is being sold in a different way. So how we package it, how we sell it, how we talk about it, um, are all things that we're learning and for us that's fun, you know, because it's, it's new and, um, you know, we get to be experimental in the design, we get to roll in more feedback more quickly from customers. Now Gabe was recently quoted as saying, you know, he wasn't, I guess to put it lightly, he wasn't a big fan of the PlayStation 3. Mm -hmm. You guys, you know, sort of built your name on the PC, you're really just now really starting to get robustly into developing for the consoles. Do you guys feel like you've, we've sort of encountered a, a huge learning curve in getting up to speed on the consoles? Do you think that maybe is what maybe brought on Gabe's, Gabe's comments about the PlayStation 3? I think Gabe's comments were sort of put out uh, as being a bit more sensationalistic than what, what he was saying. I mean, he was commenting on what 
I think a lot of people in the industry were, you know, already knew and were thinking about is that Sony's been the king for the last two generations and the PlayStation 3 isn't, you know, selling. I'm just going to be blunt with you. We missed the Wii, right? We, uh, no pun intended, we are all really big fans of Nintendo's games. But the Wii is just something that um, we just didn't see coming and I don't think that our instinct on it was that, you know, it's not a next-gen system, you know, it's not necessarily perfect fit for pushing the edges of source and graphics and all these other kinds of things. And uh, because we're still sort of entering the console stuff, uh, we weren't super aggressive about getting out there and trying to find out what it can do. Now, having said all that, you know, we're all super big fans of it. We're not working on anything currently, but with as much as people are playing it and talking about it at Valve, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came up with a cool concept that we decided to go for.